Hello, YouTube travelers, and greetings from a sad, lifeless, and loungeless, I might add, Tom Bradley International Terminal in Los Angeles. But fret not, things will be looking up soon. It's the last week of October 2020, and today on the Gentleman of Fortune channel, we'll be traveling to Tokyo Narita on board Japan Airlines 777-300ER. Today we'll be winging our way to Japan on this aircraft, sporting the Sky Eco Harmony with Nature decal. I regret to inform you that I was too slow on the draw with my camera and I missed the ground staff when they all gathered together and bowed to the customers in the waiting area prior to the commencement of the boarding process. I should have known better because the ticketing agents did the same thing when they opened the ticket counters. Today I'll be sitting in Suite 5K in the 5 Suite Mini Forward Business Cabin. I like this suite because it provides lots of privacy and has several windows to look out of. Waiting at the seat were pillow, blankets, slippers, and headphones as well as two cleansing wipes. The flight attendant offered me a moist towelette, which replaced the hot towels and a bottle of water, but otherwise no pre-departure drink. This sister aircraft outside of my window would be following us across the Pacific, continuing onto Haneda. As I settle in, here's a look at the seat controls. Today's flight only had 11 passengers, so the boarding process did not take very long. All that remained now was a bow from the ground crew, and we were ready to depart. As I looked back over my shoulder on departure at Marina del Rey in Venice Beach, I was captivated by the clouds of vapor forming over the wing. In a magazine rack next to the TV was a listing of the entertainment options as well as a card outlining how to access the onboard Wi-Fi service, a folder outlining the functionality of the Sky Suite and its seat, the in-flight magazine Skyward, as well as an in-flight duty-free catalog. Now for a look at the headphones, which were sealed in plastic for sanitation's sake. They are noise-canceling, made by Sony, and of pretty good quality. The flight attendant also presented me with an amenity kit from the Japanese company Beams in their winter seasonal houndstooth pattern. Beams describes themselves as a American lifestyle shop established in Harajuku, Japan in 1976. In addition to the more commonplace amenities, they offer a moisture mask. Interestingly, it contains a wet sheet which you place inside of your mask. There's also an extensive list of care instructions for the amenity kit pouch. As we approach our cruising altitude, the in-flight service begins. The flight attendant comes to put a placemat down on my tray table, presents me with a menu for today's flight, and takes my drink order. While we're waiting on that, let's have a look at the menu. 
As always, you can pause the video if you need more time to read. In business class, Japan Airlines serves Delamo, Blanc de Blanc, Champagne. I'll be sure to try some of that later. They have a fine selection of wines and sakis, but no dessert wine, unfortunately. Now for a look at their food offerings. While I can vouch that their Japanese meals are very good, today I decided to keep it simple and go with the Western meal. Before long, the lovely air hostess was back with another wrapper towelette to replace the hot towel service, some Japanese rice crackers, and a dirty martini. Ooh, I feel a bit like James Bond. When I finished my cocktail, a tray was brought out with the appetizer and the bread plate. The flight attendant was very proud of the appetizer and excited for me to enjoy it, and I will say that all of the various parts of it were delicious. And finally, I get to try a bit of the bubbly. Next up is the entree. I was especially impressed by the flavorful rice as well as the exo sauce. Following the main meal, a cheese course was served. While I was disappointed that they didn't have any dessert wine, it was an excellent opportunity to try some more of the de la Mode. Finally, the dessert course was served featuring a cranberry apple tart and a cup of coffee. With the dinner service now complete, I turned on the air show to see where we were in our journey. Here's a look at the larger rear business class cabin where the only other passenger in business class was seated. And this is the empty premium economy cabin. I had to pause here for a quick peek out the window since nobody was around. And now here's the first class cabin. Originally I had sought to upgrade, but I think ultimately I had more privacy in my sky suite against the window. The last time I flew this route was in a full first class cabin, and at the time the cabin crew were a little bit overwhelmed. What a difference. Back in business class, a variety of snacks were set out to sate those in-flight munchies. After my explore about, I slept until I was just over halfway through the flight. Unfortunately, Japan Airlines doesn't give out pajamas in business class. When I awoke, I decided to have the salmon bagel for a snack. Now here's a look at the sky suite with the privacy divider in the up position. I think this illustrates pretty well how the seats against the window have more privacy than even the first class seats. Despite eating more than anyone needs to, I was really craving some ice cream. The flight attendants must have been reading my mind because they proactively came and asked if I wanted some. I also asked for a cappuccino which caused some consternation. I think they felt really bad because they couldn't provide it. Incredibly, they put together a gift bag with the snacks from the galley and pointed out that some of the chocolates were cappuccino flavored. When I get to my room, I'll take a look at the contents of the bag and share them with you. In case you're interested, here's a look at the customs form, the disembarkation form, and the big sheet on the left is the health declaration form. 
This flight arrives into Japan after 4 p.m., and in the winter you get some beautiful views. Overall, it was a terrific flight, and my only complaint is that the cabin temperature was a little bit warmer than I would have liked. I hope you'll take this opportunity to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We touched down just after a passing rainstorm to conclude a wonderful flight. Surprisingly, in over 25 years of traveling to Japan, this is the first instance I can recall of deplaning at a remote stand from which we took a bus to the terminal. And now like a lovely little bonus reminder of the flight, here's a look at what was in the gift bag. A package of shredded squid snacks. A couple of madeleines. Several pieces of chocolate, including the one that tastes like cappuccino. A package of cheese snacks mixed with almonds. And a handful of pirouette butter cookies. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until the next video, safe travels.